Hello. Me again. What's up? Um, I made a video yesterday called Rage Against the Stupid. Um, a lot of people have an issue with this, which isn't a problem, but when someone is a professor, it is sort of academic hubris pisses me off. This is so indicative and stereotypical of academia, it's not even funny. There's a professor who writes for a photography magazine, and uh, he wrote some true BS, and obviously this is where a, a team of uh, uh, photographers and makes a bunch of videos on YouTube, they keep talking about bucket analogy, like, an FX sensor gathers more light. Well, no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, sure, it's like a bucket. You know, a larger bucket gathers more water. Photography doesn't work that way. I'm going to correct this in a second. Anyway, I sent off that email. I didn't exactly write the same email like the letter that I wrote yesterday. I was pretending to write a letter. The guy responded back today. And uh, <laughs> he said, you're wrong. And then, uh, then uh, that was it. Well, he said I didn't like the tone of my voice. Actually, I was very uh, nice to him in the, uh, in the uh, email that I sent him. So, this is a sort of hubris that they work on. These people have their heads so firmly planted up their ass. It's like, well, I'm a professor, and I'm writing for a photography magazine. Anyway, I sent a letter off to the magazine. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to publish retraction, nor do I really give a shit. Um, I just can't stand, you know, that sort of disgusting perverse intellectual dishonesty. So right now I'm going to blast his ass right into uh, tomorrow. And I don't care if he watches it, it doesn't make any damn difference. A lot of people have this question. Here's a couple pictures I took. Now here is a DX sensor. I've taken apart a lot of cameras. When people say they repair cameras, they don't really repair them. It's the same thing with computers. Nobody, the circuitry on these suckers and everything inside of a camera is too damn small. The actual points, like on a modern camera that's actually hand soldered, is like five points. Like five to dozen points, usually. Everything else is computers. So when people say they repair computers or cameras, they don't actually repair them. They find out the missing, com the damaged component and they replace it. Anyway, this is a uh, DX sensor, okay? Now, we'll take a look at this image right now. Let's say this represents an image that's been enlarged from a full-frame sensor. And here we're going to have the exact same angle of interception from a DX, or a crop sensor. And it's roughly equivalent. It's close enough. Full-frame, DX. Okay? Now, this person wrote in this article, and I'm going to correct a lot of misconceptions here, make things really, really simple. Because uh, noise capture, for example, has not one goddamn thing to do with the size of the sensor. The person wrote in the, now who, I don't read these photography magazines, somebody sent me a link to this and they said, this isn't right, I watched your video like a few months ago and this guy's a professor and he's writing for a photography magazine and he says here, fundamentally the noise in an image depends on the amount of light used to make it. Oh, this is the advantage of a larger sensor. It can gather more light and form a less noisy image. Let's examine that. That's not true. That's total bullshit. See, it's not the noise. No, the noise in, the, you know, in an image doesn't depend on the size of the sensor. It doesn't work that way, and I'll tell you why. Full frame, crop sensor. Full frame, crop sensor. The only thing is angle of interception. All lenses, by the way, as I've said a thousand times before, they all crap out the same amount of light. They have no damn idea, nor they give one single shit, whether it's a full frame or a DX sensor underneath. And here's another thing, no matter how damn expensive the lens is, okay, they all have, just this is exactly like a, like a lens here. Every damn lens, whether it's an expensive Zeiss or a contact or a Leica lens, same shit. You got a center point here, it's a sweet spot. You got better resolution, less distortion. You got more light here in the center than you have over here. Another advantage of using a uh, full-frame uh, lens on a DX crop sensor. You're using a sweet spot, kind of like eating out, you know, the better part of a cake or something like that. You leave, uh, you know, cutting off the crust from a, from a sandwich, you know, you toss away the crust or the nasty bits. It doesn't rely on that at all. The noise captured in an image depends upon photo site size, pixel pitch in micrometers, and SNR firmware, number three. Noise only has to do with gain. Okay, size of photosite and pixel pitch. And SNR firmware applied after the AD converters has not one damn thing to do with the size of the sensor. 
So let's roll back to point number one here. Let's talk about the DX advantages and full frame advantages. Um, DX sensor superiority means that there's more translational data per square millimeter than a full frame, given the pixel pitch. Now, also it is the case that uh, the DX uh, sensor uses the sweetest spot of FX lenses, like a pixel pitch on the D7100 is 3.9 micrometers, on the D810, which you know is a 36 megapixel sensor, is uh, 4.8 micrometers. If you were to actually use the same pixel pitch on the D7100 and scale it up, it would be a 50, is it a 56, yeah, 56 megapixel sensor. So use the exact same density, in other words, number of photo sites per square millimeter, per square centimeter, it doesn't make it, you scale it up to full frame, it would be a 56 millimeter. Like the Canon 5DS, which just came out, it's a 51 megapixel full frame sensor. It has a pixel pitch basically halfway between an Icon D810 and an Icon D7100. It is 4.14 micrometers. Um, another basis, for example, like the Nikon D4S is 7.3 micrometers. Uh, they're huge. They're even bigger than the D810, but just looking at a 16 megapixel sensor. Nikon DF is the exact same sensor, 7.3. D610 is 5.9 micrometers, which is exactly what you'd expect of the D750, because the D750 uses a D610 sensor. The only thing that's changed is SNR firmware and AD converters. That's why the D750 performs a lot better in uh, low light due to SNR firmware, but it has the same sort of crappy, not so awesome color saturation as the D810 does. The D810, of course, you know, we're talking also about the anti-aliasing filter, but uh, the color saturation blows the balls off of the D750, for example. And same thing on the Nikon D5200, 3.9 micrometers. See, this is also why bird shooters that are using a $20,000 lens are using a cheap, inexpensive DX camera because they crop the shit out of their pictures. Like, take a picture. This is a full-frame uh, sensor. Excuse me, this is a DX sensor which they're using. The little birdie might be about that big. You have much higher pixel pitch, more translational data. Ta-da, look at that. Took me a long time to make all those little stupid ass circles. You got more information, more translatable data per square millimeter on the DX sensor than you do the FX. Oh my God. That's why this professor that's writing for a photography magazine is a retard. He's just flat out balls ass wrong. Okay. FX sensors have better dynamic range and a bit better gain, but due to the SNR firmware, this advantage has been nearly nulled out. That is the case. FX sensors also, for example, do not have to be enlarged as much in order to achieve the same print size as a DX sensor. Obviously, logically so. Simplex geometry. Duh. Um, FX photosites obviously have better low light gain capacity than does of a DX photosite because they are larger. But this noise has a frequency. There's like a dozen or half a dozen different frequencies, and the SNR firmware, that's a signal to noise ratio firmware, um, has uh, made uh, FX and DX far, far, far closer than they ever used to be even a few years ago. That means the noise of these smaller photo sites, which have less gain and perform not as awesome in ultra low light, that a lot of that has been nulled out, a lot of it. Um, that's why everything is going to uh, full-frame sensors with DX pixel pitches. Um, this error, in fact, like from this uh, professor idiot, this uh, mental midget, this uh, peckerwood, this, uh, this uh, intellectual moron, uh, this error, in fact, lies in the fact that a uh, larger sensor uh, image needs to be enlarged less to produce the same size 8x10 image, for example, than that from a DX sensor. Obviously so, a full-frame sensor is larger than this, so it doesn't have to be enlarged as much to produce 8x10. But that doesn't imply that an FX sensor gathers more light, because it damn well doesn't. The luminal density shot from any lens, crapped out of any lens, is exactly the same. Here's an old 4x5 lens I picked up in an auction. It's made by Bausch & Lomb. It's all brass and wood, actually. Brass and wood and glass, of course. Um, so this sort of insanity, I mean, it just, it just, it's perpetuated endlessly. Um, I lost my place. You had a luminal density shot from any lens is the same per square millimeter regardless of the sensor underneath the lens. Um, let's go on to DX. DX uses the sweet spot of very fast lenses. And it's why it's really awesome. You got like a Fuji and you get an adapter to buy like an old fast lens. It's like, well, that lens isn't so good. Yeah, but where a lens is shitty, 
is shitty uh, on the same place as shitty on the old lenses. That's in the corners and the far edges. So, like I said, every lens works the same. You've got a sweet spot right here. You've got a great sharpness, less distortion, more light here in the center than you do off of the edges of the lens. All lenses are exactly like this. They all shoot out a center, higher density of illumination than does the corners. Vignetting! Duh! Vignetting. So, DX sensors actually gather, this is important, record, gather and record more data per square millimeter of sensor. The same reason bird shooters use it. DX sensors gather the brightest part of any and all lenses, which resultantly means less vignetting from the same FX lens. Duh. DX center advantage. Even if two sensors have the same apparent noise when viewed at 100%, the sensor with the higher pixel count will produce a cleaner looking final print. This is because the noise gets enlarged less for the higher pixel count sensor. That means that D7100 at 24 megapixels and D750 at 24 megapixels, both 24 megapixel cameras, which one's gonna make, do better? Two sensors have the same apparent noise viewed at 100%. The sensor with a higher pixel count, well in this case there aren't, there isn't, both the sensors have the exact same pixel count. There's more information per square millimeter. In this case, they're both 24 megapixels, but there's more information per square millimeter on the D7100 than there is the D750. Given adequate exposure, we're not talking about low light crap and you shooting, you know, in some sort of uh, drug riddled alley and, you know, three o'clock in the morning taking, uh, you know, street photography shots in ultra low light. Given adequate exposures, the more pixels per square millimeter will have less noise when viewed at 100%, making the DX sensor superior. In fact, given ample illumination to both full frame and DX sensors, the DX sensors are gathering more light per square millimeter than an FX sensor. This is the translational data captured per square millimeter is more for the very same damn reason bird shooters use DX cameras. Oh god, it makes sense. Larger sensors do not capture more light at all. Damn it. They don't, okay? Larger sensors don't capture more light. They don't. It's like, well, yeah, sure, it's bigger. You know, a full frame sensor is bigger than a DX sensor. It's gathering more light. You know, it's like, it, you know, there's more shit for. Yeah. These camera sensors are not like buckets, okay? Larger sensors don't capture more light at all. They capture a wider angle of interception from the lens. Noise in a captured image has not one damn thing to do with the size of the sensor. Not one damn thing. Noise only has to do with the size and the pixel pitch and the SNR firmware applied. Okay? You see the difference here? We've got advantages on both sides. We have like an antenna. I don't know if you know much about ham radio antenna. You got a large honking antenna and people have antenna farms in their backyard. You could do this. You could get the same signal from some dude chalking in Japan if I dial him in with a tiny Yagi antenna about like this side with a reflector director and a driver element, or one that's about five times this size. The, the issue is, of course, size matters. I know, <laughs> it does matter. It means that the larger antenna will have better gain. But the same thing that radio astronomy figured out like 50 years ago is signal to noise ratio firmware that is driven through an image or a signal can dial out a lot of that noise that uh, the disadvantage of the smaller photo site has. I took this picture back in 1990, something like that. I printed it myself. This, this uh, photograph has survived quite well for the past 20 some years. You've got more, this is the reason bird shooters use DX cameras, damn it. Okay, there's more information per square millimeter here. More. If you have perfectly good illumination Okay, which isn't always the case, but you know, 70% of the time most shooters got good illumination. They can set the shutter speed and the aperture and get some snap and illumination. Okay, be plus or minus two stops with imperfection, adjusted in post. Okay, larger sensors do not capture more light. We're not talking about a friggin' bucket here. Remember this? 
DX sensors, technically, because they're switch capturing out the sweet image like of an FX lens, same FX lens and a DX camera or FX camera, a DX sensor actually is capturing more light, but we're not talking about square area here. We're talking about luminal density because it's capturing out the sweet spot. Every lens is exactly like this. Bright in the center, falls off. Vignetting. DX sensors capture more light. So it's actually the inverse. Given the same exposure, the same lens, two different cameras, the DX sensor is capturing more light because every lens, whether it's a cheap a cheap ass lens or an expensive ass Zeiss lens, they all shit out the same light just like this. Brighter in the center, falls off towards the edges. This guy's writing for Photography Magazine. But a lot of people don't understand this, but you're not writing for Photography Magazine. Well, I'm a professor. I'm writing for this Photography Magazine. Yeah, you know what? What you wrote is wrong. You're flat out wrong. I mean, you douchebag. You're wrong. Not you. I'm talking about the guy that wrote this article. He's a douchebag. Okay? Full frame sensor, DX sensor. It's like, well, that bigger sensor is gathering, capturing more light because it's larger. We're not talking about a window pane letting in more sunlight here. We're talking about photography. And we're talking about photography, we're talking about millions and millions and millions of points of light. So it has to do with photo site size, the pixel pitch, and, and the SNR firmware. The noise, this guy's completely wrong. He says the noise as an image depends on the amount of light used to make it. That's why a larger sensor gathers more light and therefore forms a less noisy image. That's not the case. That's not the case. A larger sensor. It's not the larger sensor, it's the size of the photo site. I can stick actually a full uh, uh, FX uh, photo site sizes on a DX sensor to get the same result. It's capturing more light because it has better gain, but all of this ultimately has been reduced, most of it anyway, by SNR firmware. They still have better uh, dynamic range on the full frame sensor because it has better gain due to the larger photo sites. But an FX sensor ain't gathering more Well, sure it's gathering more light. It's a bigger window, and everybody knows a bigger window lets in more. It doesn't work that way in photography. You know, I know what you're thinking, but your thinking is wrong. It doesn't work that way. We're not talking about windows. We're talking about millions and millions and millions and millions of little points of light. Phew. Phew. Damn. Stupidity. Rage against the stupid. Thank you for watching. Catch you later. Bye.